real estate is about freedom, choice freedom, time freedom, and money freedom, and the impact you can make with that freedom. But it doesn't come without cost. Your freedom takes work. That's why Neil Timmons brings together the tools you need to build your real estate legacy, from tips and tricks to interviews with industry titans. It's all here in one place. Real Grit. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Real Grit. I'm Neil Timmons. Hey, I've got Lex Nunez here. He's 24 years old. He's a wholesaler out of Memphis. He completed eight months after getting started in the wholesale business. That has how long it took him to get his first deal. So we're going to dive into that because that's a long time to stay committed to this. And he's been full-time for four years now. He flips, he buys rentals, and he still is crushing it on wholesaling. So I'm excited to have him here. Lex, how are you, man? I'm doing well, Neil. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. To, yeah. No, I'm, thanks for taking the time to connect up here. I'm excited to chat with you but for a whole bunch of reasons. Memphis is hot, and I, and I know you've been doing this and, and doing very well for a period of time. Tell me, though, we all started someplace. How did you even get started in this business? Yeah, Neil. So I was going to high school and it was about that time when I was becoming a senior and, you know, my parents and everyone around me was starting to ask me, well, hey, what are you, you going to be start? What are you going to start going to college for? And I really didn't have the answer to that question because I didn't feel like I had any interest in anything that maybe I could do at school because I knew that the way that when you go to school, you go to college, you go there to get a degree and you go there to find some place in the workforce to use with that degree for. And I really didn't have anything in mind that really resonated with me. So I, I always did know one thing is that I wanted to be the best at anything that I could do in life. I wanted to be above average. So I started doing a little bit of digging into uh, self-development and started to learn a little bit about how people became wealthy and how people really tried to maximize their full potential, not just living a, uh, a mediocre life. And I know there was a lot of kids my age that were, they were just living very basic. They were more of, a, of, a, of an, in an average mediocre class where they would go to school, leave, drink, play video games. Living, all day and living, living below their potential. Lit yeah, living below their potential. And for me, I always knew that there was more to life than that. And I knew that if I decided to do something young, that it would pay off for me in the long run. If I decided to sacrifice some fun in, in my early 20s, that I could grow something, I could stay disciplined, and I could achieve something more than what the average person my age could do. So when I was going to school, I decided that, you know, I, I didn't really have much of a need for it because I knew that while I was there, I learned about real estate investing. I really, I, I learned about investing in general. And my whole goal was to uh, become wealthy through investing in the stock market. But then I started to realize that it's a, it's a much riskier game than, than a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. So my next question was, well, what are some other sound investments that I could make? And one of the ones that comes across every Thing you hear is real estate investing. Everybody who's wealthy has somewhat of a real estate portfolio that they uh, control, or maybe they specialize in real estate uh, entirely. So I thought to myself that, hey, if I see that 90% of all the millionaires in America make it through real estate, right. that those odds work pretty would work pretty well for me. Right. Dug deep in learning how I can make money in real estate because I was under the impression that I need some cash. I needed to be liquid in order to be successful in real estate. But then this was in November of 2016, a buddy of mine introduced me to the concept of wholesaling real estate. And he told me that you didn't need any of your own money to don't need a bank, estate. don't need a bank, don't need a loan, don't need a bank, yeah. don't need credit. You don't really need anything. You just need to have some time and you need to have some hustle in order to try to make it work. And after he told me that, I thought to myself, that's all I need to know. All I need to know is that I can go out there and, and make it happen without any money. And let me interrupt you. It sounded to me like the mental limitation you had at the time was I had to have money in order to be in real estate. Yes. That was, that's what I was under the impression yeah. was, was that because, you know, real estate is such a large transaction. You think that in order to play in that kind of game, you need to have money that you can invest. And I didn't realize that there, I'd never heard of wholesaling before because I was 19 at the time and I didn't know much about really anything about how real estate works. So once I was introduced to the concept, that limit, that limiting belief was completely removed. And I knew that all I needed to do was just believe in myself fully. And that I, if I put the effort into to hustle and not quit, even if I was going to face adversity, that I would find some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, cool. All right. So you're turned on to wholesaling and then what happens? Um, so I started my real estate journey in January of 2017. And I had been working as a server at my parents' restaurant. So I had some money to play around with for marketing, but I didn't have much. 
and I was so new, so fresh that I didn't have really the money to pay for a coach to teach me or anything. So I really kind of had to go about things just learning through trial and error. I wish I could have done it differently. Maybe I would have been a little bit further ahead at this point, but it was still a great experience. When I started in January, I did go through quite a bit of adversity to, in order to get my first deal. It took me eight months. It took me up until August, right before I, I closed my first deal before I turned 20. So I closed my first deal in eight months and I only made $1,300 on that deal. So it still wasn't a lot to right. play around with in order to do what I was wanting to do, but right. I just really was okay with making a check and I was okay with seeing that the concept really worked and that I was able to put work into this and actually make it possible for myself. What, what you banked there was confidence. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that, that's all. I, honestly, I didn't care if the check was for two cents. All I cared about was having something in my hand that was tangible that I could say that, hey, I accomplished it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you get one done, takes eight months. Then where do you go? Where do I go from there? Well, I'm still kind of in the same boat because that $1,300 wasn't going to go very far for me right. in terms of, of marketing. So I continued to work at my parents' restaurant for a while. And after this eight month period, it took another nine months for me to get my second deal. So I ended up working at the restaurant for a while. I quit. I quit around February of 2018. And I started work at, working at a car dealership in order to make more money so that way I can market more. So while I was at the car dealership, in order for me to really be there and make money and be at the top of the organization there, I needed to be spending 60 hours a week, pretty much bell to bell at the car dealership. So I didn't have as much time as I wanted to spend on my business. So I ended up leaving the car dealership after three months of being there. And what I did was, is I went around and I bought a bunch of flyers and bought a bunch of sticky notes. And I marketed by simply putting sticky notes on car doors in parking lots like Ikea, Home Depot, Lowe's, the malls. And I didn't get anything after putting maybe five, six, seven hundred, maybe close to a thousand sticky notes out. And I had been doing this all summer long. I had been, you know, it had been a rough time because I'm not seeing anything. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, it almost seems like I'm spinning my wheels and I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. But one day I went to the mall and continued to put sticky notes out on cars. And I maybe put about 30 sticky notes out until the security guard told me that it was, it was time for me to go. Yeah. And so after I did that, I thought, you know, after putting 30 sticky notes out, even, even before when I was putting seven, 800, a thousand sticky notes out. I didn't think I was going to get a call from these 30 or so that I was able to put out, but I did have somebody call me who wanted to sell their house and I ended up locking it up and making uh, and assigning it for a $10,000 assignment fee nine months after my first deal. So it took me two years to really make something actually truly work with this. Yeah. In two years, $11,300. Yeah, exactly. So it's not anything major, but for me, I didn't care. I just knew that this is what I set out to do. This is what I wanted to do. And I was going to make it work no matter how long or no matter what it took. All right. So fast forward me to now. We're May of 2022 as we record this. What's business like in your world? Yeah, May of 2022. Now we're looking at our, my business structure has been for the most part, 60% wholesale. I would say 30% fix and flips and about 10% rentals. Uh, we've done just short of a half a million dollars in revenue, gross revenue so far this year. So we're not halfway through the year yet. And we're, we're really on track with hitting some large goals. You're at a hundred grand right now, hundred grand a month in gross revenue. Yes. Yeah, yeah. On average, a hundred grand a month yeah. in gross revenue right now. And we've, I've added some rental properties to my portfolio and I've done about 10 to 15 rehabs within the past two years. So, so tell me two years to get to $11,300. And now you're at a hundred grand a month of gross revenue, obviously a big gap. What was in there? What, what changed in that gap to get you from where you started to where you're at today? Yeah, for sure. So when, after I closed my second deal for 10 grand, you know, my next step was setting up a proper structure to try to maintain results. And I had never gotten to that point yet. So it's basically, it was like for me going from level one then getting to level two. I had never gone to level two yet. So it was another new game for me to actually learn how to efficiently spend that money to make it work for me. I ended up partnering up with James Jones actually. And he really helped me out in the beginning. He changed my mindset in a lot of ways. I wanted to be very scarce with how I spent that, that money in order to maximize it. Yeah. But James, I, once I partnered up with him, we ended up kind of just going all in. I ended up using that 10 grand and I ended up getting a business credit card that I maxed out on, setting up proper systems, actually getting an in-house acquisitions guy ASAP and getting cold callers in the team ASAP to relieve me from those duties. 
So that way we could bring in as much leads as possible. And we have somebody to handle those leads. And after that, that was where maybe the more of the mindset shift came from. Cause I realized that if I really wanted to play in this game, I was going to have to have some skin in the game and really set some stuff up to where I didn't have to necessarily keep my hands in all of these, these baskets, because it would take up way too much time. And it would leave a lot of money on the table because I wouldn't be as efficient as I needed to be in order to run the business and to grow the business. So ever since then, I ended up hiring a team of cold callers. I ended up, I still have Mickey as my acquisitions manager and simply put, we have some systems in place that have allowed us to scale a little bit more and grow a little bit more over time. It hasn't been anything, uh, hyper growth by any means, but it has been controlled small, but, uh, gradual growth increasing over time to get us to this point. Sounds like steady, predictable growth. Yeah. Steady, predictable growth. I didn't want to go from level one to level 10 and level 10 to level 30, because really, you know, once you get to level 10, you're only going to be good to play at level 10. If you've gone through the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine levels, you know, so I didn't want to skip any steps in between. And I felt like in order for me to be the best leader in my organization, I, I would have to go through all of the small gradual growth steps in order to really learn how to effectively run my company. Sometimes you can go as fast as you want. And then sooner or later, those wheels are falling off that car. Exactly. Exactly. So I wanted, I wanted to make sure I'm continually oiling the machine to where it's running efficiently, even with or without me at some point. Take me back two years into this game. You had two success stories, right? There's probably, I know there's, there's different things along the way past deals to call success. I mean, but a lot of people may go, dude, I want to quit. There's no way in the world I'm sticking two years and, and grinding and I'm going to the, going to the mall, having security chase me out of the parking lot. <laughs> right? I mean, what, what was inside you that maybe not allowed you, but forced you to keep going? Really, Neil, it was that I knew other people were capable of doing this. I knew other people had broken into real estate successfully by wholesaling. And I'd seen case studies, I'd seen success stories. So I just knew deep down inside that if someone else can do it, then I know hundred percent that I can. And even if I don't have success as early on as somebody else, or I'm, I maybe close a deal as big as somebody else at the beginning that over time I'd be able to make it work. And I knew that really the one thing is I told myself before I even started the marketing and before I went through the eight months of finding my first deal, then another nine months, I told myself that before I get into this, I have a hundred percent belief in myself to make this work no matter what. And I just really stuck to that. That was going to make it work no matter what, even if my, you know, at the time I had family members who were saying, well, don't you want to maybe look at something a little secure? I mean, it's been eight, nine months now, and then another nine months later, and there really isn't much progress here. And I didn't listen to any of that. I decided that, hey, this is what I told myself I was going to do in order for me to feel confident about myself. I'm going to stick to what I'm going to stick to what I told myself I was going to do. And I'm going to see it all the way through to the end. And that's really the mindset that I had, because there were a lot of times where I was close to the brink of giving up. And I thought to myself that winners never quit and quitters never win. And that was one quote. That's my favorite quote of all time. And I just kept repeating that to myself that if I, if I never quit, then I'll, I mean, if I never quit, then I'll have to win at some point. So I I didn't care how long it took. I just cared that I wasn't going to give up on it. Do you lose any friends along the way? Not necessarily. I never really honestly had too many friends, but a lot of the friends that I did have, they didn't share the same maybe mindset as I have when it comes to really always trying to better yourself in, in all aspects of life. So I never really lost friends, but I never really chose to like actively hang out with people or like stick around with people that weren't really like a part of this deal. You know, it was, I had one friend that, and he's, he's still my best friend to this day. He's the one who told me about wholesaling and he's a friend of mine because he's still, he's got the same mindset I do. He's very ambitious and he's driven and he's always wanting to better himself. So I, I'm very selective with the people that uh, I, I want to be friends with. And when I do find somebody who I can resonate with and we can uh, mesh well together with, well, I'm generally friends for the long haul with somebody. Have you found new friends along the way? Definitely, man. Is it, you first off, man, uh, that's all, that's, that's one thing about this business is you, you find a lot of like-minded individuals. And it's, it's best to surround yourself with people that think the same way you do in order to help you go further, not maybe just financially, but emotionally, it's nice to have people on your team or, or, or that have your back, especially in this business. It's easier for someone in this business as well to understand us a little bit better because we share a lot of the same goals. So I, I have found a lot of good friends along this journey that have been almost like big brothers or uncles yeah. in ways where they've 
been helpful, not just in business, but just life overall. And those are the kind of people I want to surround myself with. I want to surround myself with people that, you know, are always either I'm pushing them to be better. They're pushing me to be better. And we're holding each other accountable because that's where growth happens. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Tell me what's one habit that leads to your success that you could not live without? I would really say just tenacity is knowing that you, there's something that you can get through if you just, you know, keep going at it and at it and at it without, without fail. You know, that's one thing I can say that's really helped me become the person I am today is just being tenacious, being somebody who's going to go for it. And even, even if it doesn't look probable. And another thing is just having a positive attitude about anything that happens, even whether it's good or bad. That's another thing is there's a lot of situations in real estate that I've gone through some pretty rough times in real estate where it could either make or break somebody depending on their attitude that they have about the situation. So one thing I can say is being tenacious and having a positive attitude, even when you're facing adversity, you're facing a tough time and understanding that, hey, it is possible to get through this and it is possible to keep going, even if it looks like the odds are slim. That's one, one thing I can say. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. I want to move on to um, my last segment, what I call four for impact. Your favorite quote, you said it, right? Quitters never win and winners never quit. Lombardi said it. How long has that been your favorite quote? When, do you recall back when you first heard it? I think it's when I first got into this business because that's what really my self-development journey didn't start until I had just gotten out of high school because I, growing up, Neil, I, I had lived a more of a traditional life with my family or my mom wanted maybe my mom wanted me to be uh, more traditional. She wanted me to go to school. She wanted me to get a job. She wanted me to go to college and then, you know, do all of the things that people think they should do. Right. So I didn't, I didn't really understand. I didn't have, I wasn't wired to understand about personal development and growth and be, trying to be in and be wealthy and things like that. So that's really, really what I can say about that is, yeah. you know. Yeah. Hey, what do you think holds most investors back from hitting their personal next level? Really, I think a lot of it is can really boils down to fear sometimes, fear of of risking risking money, knowing that you know there's there's a lot to lose, or fear that you know someone might try to screw you over, or fear. It really just boils down to fear in a lot of ways. Maybe that because that's I, I went through that a lot, and I know if I if the fear hold me back uh, from doing what I do, I needed to do, I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am right now. Yeah. So I think that's one thing a lot of people really struggle with. And it's understandable to struggle with that because things can get hard. If this was easy, everybody could do it and everybody right. would be doing it. So that's one thing you have to get over though, is because the fear comes from not knowing. And, and the only reason people don't know is because they haven't got out of their comfort zone in order to, to, to grow in a way. So I knew that that growth came from fear and growth came from uh, uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Outside of real estate, what are you most passionate about? Man, I'm most passionate about my relationship with God. I'm most passionate about my family. I'm a pretty simple guy, Neil. I, 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 um, I'm I passionate about just taking care of myself and trying to be better in every area of my life, whether that's in, in fitness, whether that's in reading or being the best son I can be, being the best boyfriend I can be, being the best brother I can be. My whole goal is to just live my life as close and, and live it as close to as godly as I possibly can. You know, I have a very good, uh, strong faith in God. So that really keeps me centered in, in everything that I do. That's a, that's the center front of, of how I live my life. Yeah. What's your favorite way to make an impact in the community? Um, my favorite way to make an impact in the community, man, is to really just help out anywhere I can. Like, I, I, I like to, I like to pay, pay it forward for people. I like to yeah. offer up anything that I can. I like to be I don't like to be a closed book, man. I'm an open book. So if, I, if anybody can ask me anything that, that they may struggle with, or they may need help with, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in mentally, I'm, I'm always somebody who can, can, can listen to somebody and try to walk somebody through something. And really, because I, I, I remember when I first got started in this, that it was hard for me to find someone who could, who wanted to, to help somebody. Cause I know that people in the real estate, they don't have a lot of time. They know it's, 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 people need a lot of their own time to do their own thing. So it's hard to offer an olive branch sometime to somebody when you have your own thing going on. So I know what, what somebody, I know when somebody is in those shoes because I was in those shoes before. And I really just try to take my time to free up myself for people that need any help that they can. They can come to me and ask me anything, whether it's regarding real estate or personal, and I'd be happy to help and not, I'm not a coach or anything like that. So I don't charge anybody for anything. I'm really just an open book and like to use my experiences to help people stay away from mistakes and, and, and move forward to what they're trying to accomplish.
Well, I mean, you've got quite the journey from nothing, which is where all of us start, but nothing for candidly for two years yeah. to, to really crush it. And I mean, a hundred thousand dollars of revenue a month in this business in, in a very short period of time at 24 years old is awesome, man. I appreciate that, Neil. Yeah. I mean, it was, but I, I just remember in, in the beginning, it wasn't, it didn't seem very easy. And I did, I did need help from a lot of people, but yeah. I just, I couldn't get the help that I, I really needed because listen, I understand that there's a lot of coaches out there that their time is money and their time is valuable to them, but I just didn't have that. So I had to, find a way to do it one way or the other. And, and if somebody else is in my shoes, I don't want them to have to prolong their experience by making mistakes. If I, all I can do is sit down with somebody and, and walk somebody through something uh, and it take a few 10 to 15, 20, 30 minutes out of my day, you know, I just, that's never been a problem with me because I was in those shoes before. I know what it feels like to need maybe some help, to need some, to need some advice. Yeah. Well, Hey, with that said, if people want to connect with you, they want to find it, they want to follow you, where can they do so? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's Lex Nunez on Facebook. I'm on Instagram as well. It's Lex G Nunez. So I'm really, I'm really heavy on Facebook and, uh, and on Instagram. So you can find me on Instagram at Lex G Nunez. Perfect. We'll make sure the the links are in the show notes here. Below. Yeah, sounds and, good. Hey, thanks for taking the time to connect up, Lex. I mean, it's a uh, wonderful story, and I've seen your growth over the last couple of years. It's really been tremendous. I've been to your operations. I've seen the office, know, know your sales guy, great dude. So it's, it's really been tremendous to see your, your growth. And you just, I think you said it, you're tenacious. You just, you are going to get it done and perform it at a high levels. You just keep moving forward. It's yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. And you know, cause my, my whole goal, what it wasn't uh, to just be, you know, wholesaling. I, I really uh, started out wholesaling because that was the only thing I could do at the time. So right. I was using wholesaling as I've been using wholesaling as a stepping stone to get to bigger and better deals and maybe learning how to maximize profitability on anything that any deal that I come across. And I'm going to continue to to do that. I haven't gotten to the commercial side of it yet, but like I said, I'm going to continue to these steps and then learn about commercial and then start uh, breaking into the commercial side of things and start really just maybe making sure I keep every tool in my toolbox to, to, to diversify my strategies. Identifying the deal and then carving it up after the fact with whatever the exit is. Exactly. I don't want to keep myself limited to just one strategy because then you just leave money on the table mm -hmm. or you, you, you leave so much more opportunity there where if you're just going to wholesale everything, yeah, you may be able to do well making quick flips of cash, but you're going to really be limiting yourself big time on what you can achieve in front terms of a, a, a net worth growth standpoint. And that's right. Really just a skill set standpoint. Yep. So that's it's, one it's, other thing. No, that's wonderful. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time to connect up, Lex. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir, Neil. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hey, for everybody here at Real Grit, I'm Neil Timmons reminding that real estate requires real grit. See you next time. If you like our content and want more, you can access it at realgritpodcast.com. You hear it guest after guest, instinctively you already know it, but let me call it out. The most expensive action is inaction. The real estate market is full of opportunities. You just need to uncover them. You can build a business that lasts for years, makes monumental impact in the lives of those that you love. It's not just about business, but about the freedom you get because of it. Have you ever heard the saying, if you wanna go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go together. I believe that partnering is essential. In fact, I partner with hardworking investors all the time. The point is that you can get a lot further with the right partner. Let me say it again, the right partner. If you've ever thought about partnering with anyone or if you have a partner now, I encourage you to download my free Partner and Profit Guide, which includes the top five must answer questions to evaluate a profitable partnership. You can find it at www.legacyimpactpartners.com. I'll see you in the next episode.